at this moment, 25 years ago, Maine was frozen in time. You are sure to have your own memories of the ice storm of 1998 if you were in the state back then. And even if you weren't, this old footage certainly paints a powerful picture of what we went through for weeks. While the images of frozen tree branches and roads may highlight Mother Nature's beauty, it also showed the danger that weather can bring. Hundreds of thousands of Mainers were without power, many for more than a week. And ultimately through that, there were eight storm-related deaths. On this 25th anniversary, New Center Maine Sam Rogers catches up with those who worked hard to restore power back then and shares what has stood the test of time. Oh boy, winter weather advisories are out now for the rest of the afternoon for all the viewing area. It's going to be a while. You might want to make some other arrangements. We're now facing another 24 or uh, 30 hours. Well, Mother Nature has us in a headlock right now. It was, a, it was like a battle zone because you could hear transformers blowing up. Uh, sounded like a cannon shot going off. It wasn't a day, nor a week. It was an event Mainers will never forget, the ice storm of 1998. At noon today, I declared a state of civil emergency in Maine. Then Governor Angus King never will. When you run for public office, you never know what's going to come at you uh, once you get there. The alarming moment, realizing Mainers would be without power and more importantly, heat for days at least. In the town of Sabatis, there isn't a light on. Not in the local police station, not in the local market, nowhere. As a matter of fact, things were so bad here at one point this morning, road crews were taken off the road because there were so many power lines down. Power lines decorated main roads as power crews did their best to remove them. 25 years ago, CMP was led by the late David Flanagan. We're beginning to make a little bit of progress. Joe Purrington, now CMP's president, was a damage assessor in 1998. The ice storm, it wasn't about restoring power. It was more about rebuilding the grid. He says the ice knocked down about 2 million feet of power cables. If you laid that out, the wires would stretch the entire distance of Maine and then some. 2,600 telephone poles fell too one of the worst natural disasters. It was truly a perfect storm or a disaster. Anything over a half inch is fairly catastrophic because ice is so heavy. Double and even triple that number and you get this. What troubled past and present meteorologists, the storm didn't move. It just sat there for three to three and a half days. Most people saw the freezing rain. So that's what put it over the edge is it just kept coming over the top of that warm front. When the rain stopped and the sun shined, there was a brief moment of beauty. Maine was frozen in time. It was uh, beautiful in one way to see what Mother Nature had done. But the moment of reflection lasted as long as an ice-covered tree oh reaching its breaking point. Only an instant. The focus for Governor King then became the response. Experience, and I'm sure you and Mr. Witt have found in other areas of the country, when you have a disaster like this, the response of the people themselves. And somebody would call in and say, I don't have any water at my house out on the Emden Road. And four or five people would show up an hour later with, with jugs of water. Many Mainers recognize the man sitting next to King 25 years ago. For the younger ones, that's former Vice President Al Gore, who left Maine with a promise. I called up Al Gore, I said, remember you said anything I need? The promise was kept. Within days, utility crews from North Carolina were flown here on military planes. The noses opened up, the bucket trucks drove out. It was like seeing the cavalry arrive. To lead the cavalry, King tasked National Guardsmen familiar with main roads. We called them bird dogs, and they would lead the bucket trucks to the places where they were, they were most needed. After 23 long, cold winter nights, the last main home had its lights back on. And after all these years, one message will never be forgotten. You know, again, Mainers helping Mainers, and that's what's great about being in this state. But it was also a good experience in that we came together in a way that uh, I haven't seen before or since, to tell you the truth. The truth is, the ice storm of 1998 is a frozen memory Maine will never forget, a dark memory of Mother Nature's worst, and a shining reminder of Maine's best. Sam Rogers, New Center, Maine.
As you can imagine, the technology that the power companies like Central Maine Power use has changed dramatically over the last quarter century. Now customers can report outages right from their phones and track live restoration updates through apps or email. CMP officials also told us they've rebuilt our power grid to be more weather resistant. So if another major ice storm comes our way, we'll be better prepared. We have a lot of coverage from that storm. If you would like to look back on some of our old footage or some of the stories that we shared through that major moment in our history here. Just head over right now to our website or our new Central Maine app.